Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Dog Project 365, episode 490. We're out at CrossFit Circuit Plus uh, out here in Kuwait City. I'm here with Uli, 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 Uli. It's so hard for me to say. Uli and Megan, right? Yep. Right. Okay. Check, check. We're good from right there. I had to bring Uli on the show because I finally I found a uh, a crook elbow soulmate right here. Let's show that. Look at, look at. We like the same. Except mine's worse than hers. But uh, here's the thing: is there certain things that will just about everything that's a it's a it makes it it hampers us, right? But one thing that it doesn't hamper us with is uh, kettlebell swings because when we do kettlebell swings we actually want to have this little bit of this crooked arm right we don't want our arms to be too straight because then we end up going too deep we actually want to be able to catch the bell right into our crotch area which brings us on to today's two faults that we're gonna fix uh, we're gonna bring Uli in here right here one of the things that we see when people get super tired is they start going what we call elbow deep all right now we know uh, before you pick up the bell we know that we want to be able to catch the, the bell pretty much as high into our crotch as we can because that allows us to harness that hip flexion, right? So we bring the bell in, we come into hip flexion, and now we use this explosive hip opening to give us all the power for the kettlebell swing, okay? So what we want to think of is we want to take our hands together and we want to put our hands so we're catching um, our wrists basically right onto our crotch. So we, we come in right here and the first couple swings are going to be just right there, right? Just, yeah, exactly. So we think about catching like if we were like Willie Mays. Anybody here watch baseball? Willie Mays, he's the old... Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, Willie Mays used to catch the ball like this, right? Back in the day. And that's exactly what we want to think of. First, show me the fault before we go too, too deep. As we get tired, we let the bell pull us down. We let the bell pull us down. See how she gets elbow deep? And now, her movement has to be much more vertical. And we start not being able to use our hip and take advantage of our hip. And we actually... Start leaning back. Good, you can stop for a sec. We actually start to lean back much farther, and then once we lean back much farther, we have to, the belt will come up and vertical, and we have to shoot our head through. And this is all this wasted movement. We're gonna have Megan come in here and show us because she is a lot better at leaning all the way back, right? I want you to watch her back, okay? As she starts to fall up backwards, okay? See how she comes way past that vertical plane. And we wanna think about her stopping right there, okay? So, hop on down. So what we're gonna have Uli come back here and do is she's just gonna stop into her crotch, right? She's gonna kick, keep the bell as high as she can so she can harness that, per, that, that power. She's gonna use an explosive hip opening to come straight up and over. But again, we wanna watch that her torso doesn't come forward and shoot through, okay? That's much better. So here's our cue. Our cue is to, grab, to, to catch with our wrist and to push our hand away as we explosively open the hip rather than to think about pulling all the way through, right? So that so the kettlebell stay really, really hot. All right. Second cue, come on back in, right? Thank you, you're so good. She's like she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Second cue is this: is we want to think about standing up straight, tall, rather than pulling backwards. Okay. When we get too deep into the kettlebell, we think about pulling backwards, and we tend to pull backwards. So we want to think about standing straight up, straight up. And the way that we're going to be able to do that is I'm going to sit here just with my hand. And I'm going to sit here behind Megan, and every time she comes up and she hits my back, she's going to stop. No bell first. No bell first. Okay. So from right here, she's gonna start, she's gonna hit her wrist, and she's gonna think about putting her, pushing her wrist back, and then she's gonna just not hit my hand, or if she hits my hand, she's gonna hit it lightly until the bell comes all the way through, okay? So we can do this for a minute or two, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a light bell. Somebody grab me another lighter bell. Good, see how she already started to hit my hand? I would stop with this bell, okay? Drop this bell down, and I would go to the next bell below this, because we still want her to be able to control the movement. So we go to the next light as well, and we see if, we, if she can stay back on that one. Good, much better, right? Keep tight, tight, tight right here. Tight, 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 tight. Don't let me tickle you. Good. Yeah, but that's working there, right? Good, much better. Okay, so we have two cues for today, guys. Guys, we have, I said guy. We have two cues for today, guys. We have keeping that wrist into the crotch. Doesn't matter how tired you get because you still, your hips are still much stronger than your low back is. We'll fire up our low back if we don't. So, push it, catch with the wrist, catch our wrist in our crotch, throw and accelerate our wrist away as we extend our hip. And second one is, we're standing tall, not pulling backwards, cool? Cool. Megan, thank you guys so much. CrossFit Circuit Plus, thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome. Guys, until tomorrow, we are optimizing function to optimize performance.